Thanks. Well, thanks for being here, and thank you for that recording reminder. I have, I had several reminders for myself on the screen and forgot. So, I'm um, also happy to see that both Natalie and Alana have so much support with them today. It's amazing. Uh, so, John, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to you if you're ready. Absolutely. So, uh, and John, um, if you could just quickly introduce yourself for people who may have been a couple minutes late. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm John Kaiser. I'm the director of education here at Materials for the Arts. And, you know, as you know, today is just a chance for, for us to kind of like form a, form a group, have a conversation. There'll be future meetings, but we really just want to emphasize uh, the, the advantage perhaps of, of combining the arts with thinking about sustainability um, when it comes to working with uh, District 75 schools. And really excited to have all of you here today. And I know I've done some fantastic, uh, you know, work with uh, some of these schools, especially today. We're, like, we're, we're lucky to see uh, Joy Suarez, one of our amazing teaching artists who's done some, some great work with uh, uh, Miss Thornton and Miss Meek at, at P141 and they're great teachers. So I'm here in our warehouse. This is one of the resources we just want to remind you of or, or, you know, kind of reinforce, which is materials for the arts. Everything here is reused materials donated by companies. And in the end, the supplies here are all free for New York City teachers. And so this is a great way um, to, to think about reuse and art and, and what a great way to uh, create hands-on engaging artwork that's differentiated for all different types of of learners um, uh, by doing sustainability themed art projects in your in your classroom. Um, so just just right here, you can see aisle after aisle of these great materials, and we're going to do like an art project together in a bit. But I mean, just look at this right here. These are airplanes, paper airplanes, and and right away it's just this fantastic display um, that that is is just a testament to some of the art pieces that could be created, but also studying aerodynamics, studying. Uh, gasoline fuel in airplanes, setting all these different elements. So I just wanted to, to just quick make sure you understood that this place is literally a resource for you. If you ever have any questions, you can sign up, you can come in here and it's aisle after aisle. We're in the fabric section here. And I just wanted to show you this display here. This is a, a solar system using different spheres, right? So ornaments, found objects. So when we're talking about art projects, it doesn't always have to be just an abstract art piece. It can really be something where you're engaging your students and thinking about all sorts of different subject matters integrated. Um, and, and, and we have the supplies for you. And also the inspiration, hopefully, um, to give some of your students or some of your fellow teachers uh, approaches to how they could be doing projects with free materials that already exist in your classrooms, already exist in your community. Uh, so there's a lot of fun. It's a scavenger hunt. Um, you know, so, so really today we're just playing a role to encourage people to, to think about the arts as a, as a possibility. Um, a lot of times within the curriculum that you're working in, there's more flexibility for evaluation and for time to work on projects. Um, and so, so this is a, a, a great possibility when it comes to, to making sustainability projects to think about how reuse can be involved in that as well. So yeah, I'm just walking you through here just a little bit, but I'm going to join up with you in just a second to, to have a moment of Zen and actually make some art after we hear from some of these fantastic uh, participants. So thanks for, for including us and glad to be here. All right. Thanks, John. I'm uh, going to go ahead and turn things over to Natalie. Natalie, are you good to share your screen? I also have your slides. If you'd prefer um, that. Yes, I think I am. Um, I just need to make sure like do it to share sound. Um, okay. I guess I'll figure that out, right? Uh, yeah, when you hit when you hit share screen, there's a, a share sound button in the left lower left corner. You might see. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh wait, one sec. Um, share sound. Okay, so just to make sure that's on when I get to that one. I don't know. Maybe sure. that one okay, hold on. One sec. Okay. We'll, we'll get, we'll try it again if we mess up. Okay, you can see, me, see the screen. We can see that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, we put this presentation together. Our green team spent a lot of time the past uh, week and a half talking and reflecting on what we've done throughout the years in our partnership with Materials for the Arts and with Joy and Louie and um, our work with the Sustainability Office. 
And we have gotten some uh, a few times been the recipient of the sustainability grant alongside of working with um, MFTA and having an opportunity to be a part of their NIXA grant. So we have throughout the years, we put uh, a green team lo logo together. We created green team bags. Um, and these are things that not have been successful, but not might not still be happening. We want to look at this and, and come back to some of these things. As you know, there's been some pauses. So um, we're excited to try to get that back and going. Um, the Ladybugs is student art that was created and then became a sticker for our uh, essential oils aromatherapy spray. And that also became a product in our school store and in the classrooms. So these are just some visuals that have been a part of our school. And this basically, this slide is telling the story of Joy and Louie who have been working with us for, it's like almost 10 years. Um, we've been doing watercolors, collage, songwriting, and throughout the years and at different sites, we've been working on the students' social, academic, and developmental goals. And it's been a really nice way to see our student voice. Um, in later in the slides, you'll see um, that we had a gallery where the students actually had their work represented in a New York art show in Manhattan. So that was one of the bigger highlights of our work. And it was so exciting. Um, it's been very exciting to see our partnership grow. We have two gardens, uh, outdoor gardens in our Williamsburg sites. So we want to explore more ways to what will gardening look like at our other sites because not all of it has to be outdoor. Um, so we're really trying to tap into our what has been successful and what can we do this year at other sites. Um, so this this is Joy and Louie on Zoom during our remote time, especially early on. And we're very lucky to have had them put together videos for us to maintain our gardening at home making lemonade at home, instruments you can make with objects around the house. And we've had Zoom sessions that have really helped keep our community together, especially in the social emotional way. Um, it's been very impactful for our families as well. And then um, one year we had uh, an after school program where we did stop animation and we won um, an award to present at our, uh, they made a video um, that we that was presented about uh, water resources art. And if I have time, I'll show that video, but I don't want to take, I can talk a lot. So I'm going to just keep going. We'll see what happens. Um, this is our garden at 71. Um, so we have grown strawberries, basil, tomatoes, um, and a lot of the herbs have been packaged to be a part of our school store. Um, and then this is our garden at uh, 380. It's across the street, so they kind of complement each other in different ways. We uh, were able to get grants, specifically the sustainability grant helped fund um, when we built these wooden garden beds. And then uh, the orange pots came from MFTA, and there's just so many things. Um, Joy was able to connect with um, community uh, uh, in Cold Spring that donated plants and vegetables to help support so there's been a lot of love that's gone into this throughout the years. Um, this is, uh, okay, this is more work. Our students are actually um, here in a 611 class helping plant. Um, uh, this was a springtime event. So we had families at different times, we've had families come and be a part of this process, but this is just one example. And this is our 54 site. We are in conversation now about, uh, we and we have some grants, uh, small grants that we got to help support this, but our, one of our visions is how we can have rain barrels and greenhouse and different seating arrangements to support um, our sustainability and MFTA goals. So this is a, a future plan. And another really like exciting thing that has happened one year, we worked with JetBlue they have a really big volunteer system group um, that basically comes and part of uh, their volunteer section, they came to help us build garden beds. These were supposed to be uh, wheelchair accessible garden beds, 
Um, and we kind of had a little blip and they went an extra mile and helped us build these legs that day because I don't really remember exactly what happened, but they didn't send us the legs. So um, they came and helped us and the beds, um, we also kind of hit like a wall because nothing grew out of the beds and we never knew why. But um, the point is that they got to know our students and our school and um, we got to you know, work with them and we are trying to figure out like how to make our beds wheelchair accessible. And this is just like an ongoing conversation. It's not perfect, but it's really important to us. And let's see, so this is a little more of, of what we're doing here that particular day. Um, so this was another uh, big event that happened. There was a gallery in the city where we were able to have our students' artwork displayed. And then the next day, I thought the, I thought the fun was gonna be on opening night, but uh, apparently, uh, you know what? The best part, honestly, was the students coming to see their work. And um, that was really important. I don't, okay, so the next day, okay, here's some more of their work. They took a field trip. We took the school bus, went over the Williamsburg Bridge, and they got to be in a community that they might not have you know, ever been to before, and people from the gallery got to see our students, and that was really important because they saw everything that went into setting up and their in the kids and their faces when they came in and they saw their work. Like it was a very authentic experience and the most impactful, I think, for our kids to see it and see their voices. They knew what their work was, and um, they they were really astonished. And and for people who wouldn't normally um, see our students in District 75, students with disabilities, um, it was a big deal for them to see it too. So this was a really, um, although it was one small event, it was, it was a big lesson for all of us. Um, okay, so in this is last year, um, Joy and Louie, they did a lot of watercolors and um, um, online remote work and then uh, at 35, they were able, so we reached a lot of people online and a lot of classrooms. Um, and then physically we set up the gallery at our 35 sites. So this is examples of the student artwork from that. And so it continues and you can see there's a lot of good energy here. And this was recent, um, Ms. Smith at our 54 site, they collected leaves, then they made their own collages and then they um, used it for their writing. And it was part of a STEAM lesson. So um, these are things that we would like to just get a lot more um, like consistent in what we're doing um, because I think it really um, helps our students uh, with the, their goals and IEP goals and writing goals. It makes things more authentic and memorable for them. And we just wanna continue that. Um, so this was when we, we, well, a big part of growing the herbs is making the tea, preparing it, and then also selling it. So this is uh, an example of what we've done. And of course, you know, this from the beginning to actually like selling, it helps with students' OT skills, social skills. Um, there's a lot that goes into um, the goals that we're supporting with our students in this exercise. And then here's our pop-up shop. And so just to get more specific about our special ed uh, population, we are planning and continuing to adapt garden tools and, and have wheelchair accessible beds. Uh, we wanna continue to schedule and maintain the garden so that there are specific tasks for our students um, to build independence and to choose plants that are safe, not too difficult to maintain, um, eventually like have students write about these things in our newsletter and connect it to the science curriculum um, so that they can understand the benefits, even if they're not specifically growing, but to be able to share these experiences in different formats with our school. And we want to have more field trips. Wellness and mental health is a big focus. Um, garden stewardship and vocational skills, more um, student and staff green team work, and just continue to focus on our healthy cooking and how we can work in our kitchen. Like we have a kitchen at 35, so we wanna bring that back around and to use our outdoor learning for choice time. And so I just wanna show one brief video. Let's see, 
hopefully the sound tell me. Can you hear it? Okay. Papa store outdoor learning supplies. We the outside table. Okay, so I don't want to, like, I can talk a lot, so I'm not going to, but um, that just gives you, that was a little uh, sneak peek of our sustainability grant video, but um, <laughs> for this recent application, um, but that was our students and when we were talking about our outdoor space, but we need more materials to make it more like a functional outdoor classroom. So that was what they were referring to in the video with the shade and being able to meditate and having benches and tables. Great, thanks for sharing all that. Amazing stuff. Um, I, we're gonna have time for questions later, but I just had one question if you could explain, if either of you or John, can you explain how the uh, it works having Joy and Louie? Like, did you have to apply for that partnership? Uh, you may have said this in the beginning, I missed it too, but like, how did that connection uh, with MFTA come about? Um, so this was 2008, like a long time ago. Um, uh, I, I wasn't an assistant principal at the time. I was a, the literacy coach. And part of what my role was, what and Ms. Thornton and I, we wanted to bring in a lot of arts to our school. So we had, you know, experimenting with different partnerships um, throughout the city. And it worked out that um, Materials for the Arts in, just happened to be somebody that was recommended and just, it started out small. Okay, we have a few sessions, let's do this. Joy came to MS2. I remember it was like a social studies activity. Um, and I believe we worked with parents early on as well. Um, it was about three workshops. You know, John's like, okay, we, this is usually how we do it. We got the first package. And then we got hooked. So, um, you know, they've been with us this entire time. Um, and then, so at first it was just a couple of mini residencies. And then the New York City Council of Arts NIXA grant came along and they applied. It was their first year. They asked us to be a part of it. And ever since that, it's basically 40 sessions a year that this part, this grant um, collaboratively, like between the grant and our budget, we're able to get um, funding for 40 sessions. And we've just, you know, been doing that every year since I think like 2009 or 10, when that first started. And we've just very committed to the work, you know, through this conversation each year. Amazing, thank you. So if other folks have questions, if you could hold on to them. Uh, we're gonna turn things over to Alana, and then we're gonna have some time to share out questions, ideas, Alana, are you good to share? Yes, okay, I think. Great. Oh no, it's not giving me accessibility. Hmm. I, for some reason, I can't share. Let me make sure you're still a co-host. Yeah, looks like it, but that's okay. I have the slides, so I can share. Just give me one second. There was an update you, this morning, so you might have to. While you guys worked that out, one other thing I could mention about, you know, some of the success of the partnership at 141, I think, is the the sustainability grant. You know, applying for that grant, and and that that's also a great way to, to develop that, that relationship. Also, there's a great grant from the uh, New York City uh, DOE Office of Arts and Special Projects every year, which is a, coming from the art side, but, you know, the, both can be complementary. Great. What's the time? What's the window for the arts grant? Is it is it 
the the arts grant or? has already passed for this year. Okay. Um, it, it tends to be a little earlier in the year, October, but okay. you know, early for next year. Yeah. Good enough. Mm -hmm. okay. right. So hi everybody. My name is Alana O'Donnell. I am a teacher at a District 75 program, 721K in Gravesend, Brooklyn. I'm also the sustainability coordinator this year. And I really wanted to take the opportunity to share some of the amazing um, work that my colleagues and students have been doing throughout the years. So if, um, what makes, what makes me qualified for this? I had a really great mentor in Erin Laraway. Um, I don't, many of you might know her. She really got me into gardening and then started to um, push me to do different things with different materials and take, take a different stance on the environment. So what do art and, oh, you can, you can go to the next slide. Um, what do art and sustainability have to do with one another? So sustainability development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This was the um, Bern Lant Commission, which was assigned in 1987. It was created by the UN in 1983. So this is not new. It's just something that has taken the world forever to get to. And we are at a place now and a time now where it has to happen. Next slide. So what are we doing at 721? We're making our own paper. We are upcycling garden projects. We are hosting trash and shows with materials found around our building and materials gotten at the MTF, MFTA. We are recycling bottles to purchase art supplies. We are making holiday ornaments using garbage paper, <laughs> garbage plastic that you would see floating through the air or on the belt. <laughs> I will stop and grab it if necessary. <laughs> Next slide. So here's are some of the projects that we used, uh, that we, we created. If you could go back one, I'm sorry, Patrick. So at the beginning of the pandemic, um, not everybody had supplies, but I had seeds and my students and I grew our radishes in our sneakers. We grew basil in our sneakers and we sparkled them up with whatever glitter glue that we could find. <laughs> And um, every student was shipped seeds just to do stuff like this at home. Next slide. Um, Mr. John Miola and myself wanted to do something special for our mothers on Mother's Day. So I asked moms for old high heels that they were going to throw out. And John recycled jars and we created wildflowers and marigold plant planters, which went over really well. And um, parents still ask if they can have another, <laughs> another high heel, which is really, it's, it, it's a real treat for moms to see their shoes reused in, in this unique way. Next slide. Our trash and show. We upcycled old t-shirts, headbands to create our Age of Aquarius look for the movie Hair. The ladies and gents even got their makeup done by professional makeup artists. This particular show was um, completely sustainable, and it was a trip down um, some of our favorite movie classics, and I have a couple of examples of the movies you'll see. Next one, The Wizard of Oz. Everything that you see on our students was a found item within the building, or it was picked up at the MFTA. Um, it was really an experience going in and digging in there. My colleague waited outside with the truck and I would throw things down uh, throughout, throughout my breaks of time. The next one is Braveheart, the next slide. And this is a really cool ensemble. They, um, Mr. Rizwan Malik uh, used old scraps of leather cloth um, and material from the MFTA as well as cardboard. And they walked down the red carpet to the theme song by um, in, in the movie Braveheart, which was hysterical because they were all fighting with their swords, their made up swords, and they found these great sticks outside. And it was a memorable experience. Next slide. And again, we're going back to Mr. Miola. He actually um, created these old tissue boxes and glove boxes had the students decorate them. He used them for uh, picture frames as well as um, market, 
marker recycling projects. And you can see how this becomes, this isn't just a sustainability lesson. This is a lesson in math, science, and what will happen. Um, and I can't really see the number. They picked up by V13, dropped off by V13. All of this is really, um, and we all know we have those dried markers sitting in our desk. So we can, <laughs> it's a very simple project, a very simple project with huge, huge ramifications. And Miss Ashley Cantor and her students were using their creativity to make old paper new again, and it actually landed them in an art show. Students, if you can go to the next slide. So the program is called SCANA, which Miss Cantor and um, our art teacher, um, my, I'm drawing a blank on the name right now, created self-control, communication, arts, navigating, and advocating. The program allows students to elaborate on their transferable skills necessary for the workforce. Their art was displayed using the paper that they created. It was actually really, it's such an amazing thing to see students take tiny bits of paper and create all new projects based on that. Next slide. I'm going to try to say this word, a Dijigurudu, Miss P. Antone, who is here today, and her students during the pandemic created these using paper towel um, rings. It is a wind instrument, instrument played with continuously vibrating lips to produce continuous drone that requires a special breathing technique. So we're in the music here. We're doing something different. Totally unique. I had never heard of this until Miss Ann, Miss Pia showed me. Next slide. So how? Can, oh, oh yeah. You don't have the other the other slides I added. That's okay. So how can I create opportunities? Starting a green team. Ask questions. Host a trash and show. Ask more questions. Start small. Take chances. And remember, it's not the product; it's the process. And I have live links to um, the MFTA's website, as well as freecycle.org, which has great stuff for free as well, as long as you can pick it up. Uh, we also have a garden at 721. It is called the Garden of Dreams. And I don't, my slides didn't upload to um, the, the, my PowerPoint. I apologize for that. But um we just finished closing it out for the season and we will be back at it in March. This year we grew corn, basil, tomatoes, potatoes, uh, onions. We had sage. We have an abundance of sage. So if you ever need sage, 721 is the place to get it. At. <laughs> and um, we also, and BT is going to yell at me for this one, but I'm going to give it. The plug is to get this abandoned land next to 721 handed over to us so we can develop it as a working farm for our students. It's a dream that I will continue to work on. It's been five or six years now, but um, it has just been left by the city and they can't afford to build a school on the property anymore. So hopefully we will get it and it will become a place and a space for the community and the school community to continue to grow and learn about the environment and the importance of sustainability. So thank you very much, guys. Great, thank you all so much, the three of you for sharing. If we could get a little virtual applause, show some <laughs> love in the chat. Um, and we can go ahead and open things up for questions if folks have questions. Well, we'll definitely come visit that farm and maybe we can put our powers together because I like a little challenge, so. <laughs> these are just, these are fantastic projects. I mean, you know, both, both of these are just such great examples of of realistic ways that sustainability and art can overlap and specifically um, working with, um, you know, all sorts of different abilities and different interests. And, and it's just creates such a, an opportunity for everyone to kind of fit in where they can and do what they can and, and really find uh, empowerment and uh, success too. I mean, I love the trash and fashion show, you know, seeing the gardens and, 
And um, so just, you know, it's really, I, I mean, and, and not to mention just the success stories, like when, you know, literally tears, just because it's so beautiful seeing what these kids can, can create. It's just fantastic. I just, I just want to add um, two things. One of the pieces um, that I wanted to mention was not only does it show what our students are able to do um, and uh, that all students are able to do, but it really does give them choice in the matters of what they want to do and it highlights other skills that they have. And when you look at both of the presentations, I think it's important to know as well for those who are here that um, both of our schools are very, they're similar, but they're also very different. Um, 721 is a big high school, is a high school. So those are older students and our students are a little on the younger side. Um, you know, we're pre-K to eighth for the most part. Um, and then I have a few um, high school classes. So it also shows that it's not only, you know, the abilities, it's also the age differences and the different developmental things that are showing up in these students. And then I just wanted to mention a great, another success that I think is important to mention. Um, you know, you asked before about the partnership um, with Material for the Arts and Material for the Arts has been around for a long time. So I remember when I was in a teacher when I was in school in class I went up there for the first time and it was like a and now you've just come eons um but Joe you know Joy and Louie um the way they work with everyone is that they see potential all the time as well so the ideas are always being generated by Miss Meek by the green team and so small ideas and I think that was really important that you said start small in the production in the uh, presentation um small ideas and then it just keeps going and going and going it just takes on a life of its own but I do want to mention one other story which is um you know Louis just really really wants everyone to you know really get into playing you know music and playing instruments and show those great ways of making your own instruments and um one of the best things I did one day during during COVID was you know Louis was able to get a, a guitar for one of the students and the student is uh, multiply you know handicapped and um I wind up having to go and I was blessed with going to deliver it to the, stu to the student. And I mean, they were all so happy that this student got this guitar because she, she was at home remote. And it was one of the best things that like we ever did. And it was because of their, their spirit and the, you know, evidence and proof that they knew that these students could really grow with everything that we do. And so it's really just been um, very enlightening and uh, very heartwarming. So thank you. I froze. I'll just add that it's a total pleasure. I, I love the partnership. It, it We're a family at this point, you know, and you're absolutely right. It is one of those things that you can just keep growing and learning. Um, I really want to learn how to grow potatoes. I'm excited. <laughs> I, want us, I, want, I want us to be growing some more products like going on at your garden. That's very exciting. But yeah, we really, and then having MFTA for everyone who's an educator and, you know, Alana, you're going on and on just seeing all the references of the work that your the students are doing. It's just, it's just, there's something kind of incredible to have these really wonderful materials. And then just for, you know, the young mind to just be able to grow and expand and all that tactile, tangible stuff that we all need anyway. There's just so many sensory ways that can be integrated as well. But I have to say that the gardening has been so incredible. And we just got a new um, board member who's been incredibly generous. He, had, he runs a nursery. And so that's really ex helping us expand our gardening as well and really experimenting with growing in pots. I love the shoe idea. I mean, that's like ridiculously funny. Um, but just, you know, being, you know, if you don't have a raised bed, what do you have? You know, and so just being resourceful. And then I experimented with growing, growing green beans in pots. And I really want to extend that to next year at 
141 because I had green beans in a pot all summer long and it was just the freeze recently that they died, you know? So these kinds of foods that can be easily transportable once it's been growing for a while on site, that then can go home and become this family engagement for all the rest of the summer and that kind of stuff is really exciting for me. So I'm so glad, Natalie, thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. Anyways, I'll start speaking. <laughs> I was just going to say that with the shoe guard, with the shoe planters, don't use open toes. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Natalie. You were mentioning that you were working on or already had made the flower beds wheelchair accessible. Can you just describe what that process is like? Like, do they have to be a certain height, uh, width, et cetera? Well, the first go at it that we had was the picture that I showed you, which is at our 71 garden. And that's when JetBlue came to help us build those. Um, it, we're, we're still trying to gain information on what's best. Um, basically, we're just, you have to look at the structure and make sure there's space and that they're at a certain height for our students who would be in a chair that, you know, it makes sense that it's at eye level and arm level that you're, you don't want them to be too tall. But again, like it, it's not the, it sounds maybe a little simple, but it's not because you have to think about the ground and think about how you would want the person to maneuver around. So it's, it was, it's an idea that we had. And also those beds didn't really let anything grow. So it's kind of like just, like Alana said, you have these ideas, it's the process, it's the conversation, it's trial and error. Um, so it was, it's, it's not something that we've refined. It's just that we want to keep looking at, at, in everything that we do, looking at our spaces, thinking about our students and equity and making sure like we're honoring, like does the space allow for them to have access in whatever? And in this context, it's the wheelchair accessible gardens, but there's no like formula. It's just having that conversation and thinking about those students at that time and what works best. Well, I, I do want to add that, yeah, it was really strange. Those were prefab and they were the right height for a wheelchair to go underneath and students were able yeah. to reach in. So it did work. We don't know why it couldn't grow but then we kind of moved to big containers like big pots that a yeah. wheelchair is accessible that they could just wheelchair right up next to it and be able to work those with those big orange pots so it's kind of like a user-friendly way unless you have like a really good carpenter on site you know that one of the teachers is good at woodworking or something you could definitely build those but like Natalie is saying it's like you know what was interesting also at that site was that was these funky tiles so it was hard to navigate because the the ground wasn't really right. So there's so many variables. But at 380, we probably could look at something at some point because it's more it's more gravel there. But that was what we experienced. I'm gonna jump in again. And um with the sustainability grant this year, I put in for um comp compost come compost. That's not the word. <laughs> um, plastic, I guess, recycled plastic trestles to place against the fence, so I could, so we can grow all of our vegetables that we're taking up massive amounts of space in our beds, so they'll grow straight up along the fence with um, zip ties, so that you have you're not taking up very much space with just a narrow bed at the bottom, and now you've created this whole new dimension of gardening, and uh, you, you can use fabric liner behind it so that it blocks out people from stealing your tomatoes or your cucumbers or anything like that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I'm a teacher uh, from P811Q at 37. Um, I was a little late. I was uh, attending parent-teacher conferences today, um, but I want to say just great job to everyone who presented. I also have a few ideas on how I'm going to integrate art into our garden. Um, my first garden was last year. Um, I won the sustainability grant, which is great, and the Grow NYC. Um, I work with students with disabilities um, from first kindergarten to uh, third grade. Um, so the, I have the young ones, and it was just a great experience to have the project-based learning 
during the pandemic as well. But we still, you know, we collaborated together. We took walking trips to Home Depot um, to buy the supplies. And then we built the beds together. We, it was just, everything was just a, a time sensitive, but also the collaboration was really great. So just embedding all the ideas that I've just watched all the presenters um, do, I'm just excited, especially the shoe idea. I'm like, look how we can turn a shoe and plant seeds and just grow a harvest. Um, we also had our uh, homecoming this fall, uh, this past fall, and we sold a lot of our vegetables, uh, which was great. We've raised quite a amount of uh, money and we're excited to start our garden in the spring again. So we're just really excited. Right now we're just working on building the tower garden inside. Um, we did get a nice donation from the Green Bronx Machine. Um, so we're building our tower garden inside and we're just taking step by step. I'm the garden coordinator at my school and I'm working alongside the STEM teacher to make it a success for the students. Great, thanks so much for sharing, Stephanie. Did anybody else want to share their experiences or have any questions? Okay, well then I'm gonna share my screen again, just do some uh, end of session plugs, announcements, upcoming stuff, uh, and then I'll turn it back over to John, who's gonna lead us through an art build. So just bear with me for one second, bring up my screen again. So I'm glad you all were uh, talking about our grant. It has unfortunately closed at this point, it just closed last week, but there are some other upcoming things that you and your students can take advantage of. Um, so we have our Solar Schools Education Program. It's a partnership with Solar One. It's for educators grades three through 12, it's free. Um, so it's a place for educators to learn interactive activities and virtual lesson plans and how to incorporate climate change and renewable energy content into curriculum. And you can earn CTLE credits, which I know people are always excited about. Uh, so that I believe is gonna pop the link to that program in the chat. Yes, he did, thank you. Uh, Our Future is another program. I'm glad um, both or Alana, I know you referenced music, at least in your presentation. Uh, Our Future is a program uh, where we, it's an opportunity for students to be mentored by professional musicians. Uh, so they work on writing a song the entire year and then they perform it at the end of the year. Uh, super cool program. And the application's open now through December 23rd. And they, this end of year video they do Last year was virtual, um, but it ended up having like 10,000 views on YouTube uh, over over that. And this year, they always try to do the final performance at like a really big music venue. It was supposed to be at um, Lincoln Center last year, and obviously that could happen. But uh, the location doesn't really matter. It's for the students, and it's an amazing program. So check that out. Pat, also last year it featured our first uh, D75 student artist. So it did. That would yes. be great to have that continue to expand. Yep. Uh, it and is for uh, high school only, though, so I don't know how many of you. Oh, uh, yes. That's I know really we have important a, to Alana School's high school, but I don't know how many others here today are. So. Yes, thank you. High school only. Um, yeah. It's also last year we had our first English language learner students. Um, there were three young men from one school who performed their song in Spanish. So that was amazing. Uh, we also have the Climate Ed Leadership Team application that's open right now. And Alana, can I put you on the spot to talk a little bit about this? Alana is part of this program right now. Uh, Jasmine is too, who's a participant here today. Jasmine Gerardo, yeah. Jasmine and I worked on the same team last year <laughs> in the uh, climate leadership team. Um, yeah. So Jasmine, we created, and I'm going to forget the name of the document, a... It was a, digital, it was a digital document. 
uh, that uh, created hyperlinks to the to the sustainable goals um, established by the UN. Yes, exactly. And uh, it was a fun project because because we learned a lot from each other. Yeah, like how to create a digital document. This girl did not know how to do that. <laughs> um, uh, so we meet once a month and, you know, we just learn from each other. And, um, you know, we try to find strategies on how to embed, you know, any sustainability or, you know, uh, into any academic areas, any sustainability, you know, themes into any academic areas, basically. I'd be glad to share the, the, the document with, with the group um, if I can send that to you, Pat, so everyone can take a look. There are, the hyperlinks have um, lesson plans. They have music, music lessons. They have um, art lessons. There's a bunch of different things in there, so I'll share that with you. Alana, I just put the link in the chat Perfect. because it's posted on our resource portal. Oh, awesome. Yep. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So, yep, that is for educators, and the application is open until next Wednesday, uh, the 24th. Uh, and then the materials from today, we're going to have a shared Google Drive folder in this professional learning community. So if you're comfortable and you'd like to share your contact info, um, please share it. Uh, in that spreadsheet. We're also creating a resource idea sharing document. So feel free to, as you think of things, it's sort of messy right now, or it can be messy in this initial iteration. If you have an idea, just kind of plop it in that document. And I'm so glad both Natalie and Alana spoke about gardens today because our next session, uh, which is scheduled for December 16th, is going to be on gardening and nutrition education. So we're gonna have Grow NYC talk about their root camp curriculum. So it's a partnership between them and an organization called Ample Table for Everyone. Uh, it's 10 45 minute lessons that are based around initially discussion questions and vocabulary. And then the second half of each lesson is more hands-on and related to the senses. So we're gonna be going through their introductory lesson. Um, again, they have 10, we're gonna be going through their first one next week, or not next week, next month. And then spending some time, uh, the second half of the session, breaking into breakout groups, seeing how we could adapt the curriculum for our different populations. So sign up for that. It's on Eventbrite. And Thad, I think, put the link in the chat. I just spammed everybody with like 10 links. So <laughs> yeah. get it. <laughs> and I'll send a follow-up email that has all this information as well. Um, but. Before we turn things over, did anybody have any questions? All right. Well, John, I hope everybody has all their um, materials at hand. I know I've got my cardboard boxes and uh, lids and things like that. Yeah. So if I could turn things back over to you to lead us through the art build. Sounds good. Great. Sounds good. So actually that that slide that you had up is was cool because I, I love that. That's like a great one. It's like, um, you know, some of the things I'm going to show you today are, are a little bit more handheld in size, but it's such a great project just right there to try to, you know, do like a scavenger hunt with your school and have, have students bring in objects of different colors and then create mosaics using those different recycled or reused materials to create designs or just do a, just kind of a rainbow. There's so many, and they can be huge. Um, and they can be uh, a great art piece for the school and a great project, but they, they become a testament to sustainability. Immediately, it's, it's making a, a subconscious or a conscious explanation to kids that the things that they, they throw out, the things that they don't disappear, they're made of objects, they, they go somewhere. Um, so, you know, just, just right now, we're going to, just gonna walk you through a couple things, make make a little art here. Um, and thanks, Pat, for asking me. This is like my moment of Zen, you know, it's trying to catch up with with all the rest of you creative people here, and Joy and the gang. Um, just to be, you know, in terms of my own excitement, you know, so you start with with you know a garden or 
kind of a, a sustainability project, a science project, an art project. And, and you've seen from these examples how it turns into like um, a community, you know? And, and I hope that that's what this could be is a community of, of advocates like yourselves to, to meet again and to keep thinking of ideas and sharing ideas of, of how, um, you know, your, your students can be represented front and center in this effort and, and, and how they can show their, their importance in all of this. Um, but yeah, like when there's a garden and that stuff is grown, next thing you know, there's a party, you're eating all the food, people are having a potluck, there's a store that suddenly appears, everyone's doing the math, you know, there's, 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 a, a, there's all these fantastic things that happen, including I love the, the tea that you guys have made um, <laughs> with from your garden, uh, Joy. And so, yeah, so I'm here basically, um, you know, like I said, you may or may not have some supplies with you. Just wanted to show you, you know, when we're talking about reuse, it could just be anything, right? And it's a great way to, to create possibilities. So I guess what I'm thinking more is like, probably the people here are already kind of in the, you know, excited realm, you know, we're already ready to go, but maybe there's just some ideas that you could pass on to your colleagues to get them fired up about incorporating these things. And just to first start by thinking about free materials as a way to do hands-on projects that might not be possible. So uh, some of the things that we love to use are, you know, just, just simple things like, you know, magazines, right? Just using a magazine, I don't know if you know, but like even just some of the original paper dolls are just cutting out, you know, pictures from magazines and, and adding different um, clothing on, but just all the bright colors, all the lettering, all the faces, all the collage elements can just be used in so many different ways right away. People can bring that in and right away you can just be creating anything, just basic, you know, here's a basic collage, just using, just using found paper and, and scraps, a little leaf on there. Um, just, just the most basic concept, right? Of just, just using, using colors instead of having paper, uh, instead of having paint necessarily. And then there's so many other things you start to find. Oh, maybe I'm just going to use these old stickers or maybe I'm going to use this piece of fabric. And all of a sudden, the possibilities start popping up. One thing we love to do at Materials of the Arts is like, if you ever have any leftover envelopes or packing materials, they can be so, so awesome for making things. We always like to show people um, how, like, if you just take two envelopes um, and just, you know, literally face them toward each other and put one envelope into the other, you know, maybe you slide them in and you actually line them up and you make some kind of a, a book cover or a card, or maybe you just literally moisten the, the stick them on there and just stick it right on there. You're already starting to create basically a book. And if you just keep putting these together, you're creating page after page, which eventually could become some kind of a legit, um, you know, whole book that has pockets in there and uh, all sorts of things. So just rethinking, you know, what is an envelope and what can it become? A piece of paper, the stick them on it. It becomes a little bit of a scavenger hunt for, for the teacher, for the student, for the participants. Um, and then also to think like, what are the materials we have? Like a lot of times we, we overlook some of the packaging that comes that brings some of the materials to the classroom. Um, and, you know, again, like Joy and Louie and some of these great teaching artists will, will be encouraging people to think, oh no, you flatten that out. Next thing you know, you've got some material um, to work with that's really sturdy and has this beautiful color. It can be used to draw and it can be used to sculpt with. Um, you know, maybe it's just as simple as just like some loose leaf paper, the leftover scrap paper from the scrap bin. You know, it's got just a little bit of writing on it, but it's still good. It goes right in. Well, you can, you can reclaim that and reuse it. Um, or maybe it's like an old folder, you know, people weren't using. I mean, first of all, you could reuse it as a folder. They make great folders. Um, but also you can turn it into another material that can be transformed. So there's lots of leftover materials. Here's a sleeve of a shirt that got cut off for a project. You know, so these are the things um, we look at. And, and, you know, all these fantastic artists and these kids, they get you to think about things. It's like a little, the lid, you know, your packaging material. Like what about just taking, you know, like a CD case and doing a, a mosaic on it? This is, this is done with with string and you're like, wow, that's a fantastic art piece. Well, kind of the trick behind this is actually just using the CD case, it's transparent, just sliding an image behind there, you can actually, in a sense, trace that imagery and have a lot of success using, you know, transparency. We do a lot of like portraits, like trace our faces on there, you know, and things like that. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show, you know, just, just some examples, get, get the wheels spinning, but Really, just just finding things around, making the most of what you have. It can be so liberating in terms of in terms of making art and not feeling like it has to be perfect. And then the materials can be really minimal: some glue stick, um, 
scissors, you know, a little ribbon. Maybe it's a, a, a bin. We, we do some here where we try to create like little trays full of different leftover scraps to encourage people to think about the leftovers. And then that's what we use. Um, so it's not like you have to have a whole material. So it's just a shoebox or a little bin full of supplies. And, and those, can be, those can be used. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of get into the idea of like using paper scraps to make things. So I, I asked people to have like some, maybe like a cardboard box or scraps paper. But again, if you don't have that, that's kind of the challenge. Like what do you have around, right? So for example, for me, I, I literally had, I, you know, I'm doing these projects a lot. So I have like a leftover box here. And, and it's actually already got some pieces cut out of it. It's like the leftover uh, Gogurt package here. I already used part of it. So I'm gonna use this mainly for my color today. I'm gonna find some colors in here and I'm gonna use my scraps. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, when it comes to making art, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to look like, the, there's, no, there's no right or wrong. You know, there's a real flexibility in there, which it can be just so empowering and fun. So, um, you know, a, a good example I, I thought was this flower here, which is, 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 it's, it's a, it's, you know, a flower, right? It's, it's on a, it's, they have the stem here and we can see the leaves and there's the petal and, and the all the center, et cetera. But it, it's, 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 it's made with all these found materials. You can see the patterns on there when you flip it over, it has completely different designs. Does, is there a flower that looks like this in the world? Not exactly. Does it, is it a flower? Absolutely. So that's, I, I think a bouquet of flowers is a perfect metaphor. You know, when you're making a bouquet of flowers, it's not like there's a, a right or a wrong. It's just, it's just experimenting. You're finding colors, you're making shapes and, and everybody wins because it's, it's just, uh, it's going to be beautiful to you no matter what. So, so that was the project I thought it'd be fun for us to work on today. Um, and, and when you're working with students, you know, it, it can involve cutting, it can involve ripping, um, it can involve uh, coating things with colors. I know um, at, at P141, I've seen some great projects where it's like an outline of, say, of a certain shape, like maybe fall leaves. And then the students are ripping different colors of paper, reds and, and yellows, and, and they're ripping these colors. And now they're coating the leaves and it's creating this effect of, of the fallen leaves, but it's also creating these great conversations. So that being said, Say, if, you know, if you don't have anything, you just kind of watch me and, and, you know, listen to the, have a Bob Ross listening moment here. But if you want to dive in, you can. Um, so, you know, whatever you're going to work with here, I, I want to try to create some kind of a stem, right? So I'm actually going to use, use this box here. So I'm going to start. Now, here's a trick. Sometimes it can be meaningful to draw what you're going to cut out first. Um, and, the, and that's, every teacher is different. Everyone's going to have their own thing, right? Everyone's going to have their their thing. I personally um, don't do that because it creates a sense of like kind of cutting within the lines or without the lines. So, you know, for this situation, it could literally just be just a challenge of kind of cutting out a long strip, just long strips, right? Does it have to be perfect? No, it's a great uh, challenge, right? So here I am. I'm just going to go into my box. I opened it up. Uh, if your box is closed, just rip it open so that it flattens out. And you just go in and just try to you know, cut a line. And, and there you go. You've already got something to begin with, right? Does it have to be a perfect line? Absolutely not. It can be organic. Um, and then same concept, right? So, you know, this could be ripped. This could be strips of paper. This could be anything. But we're just trying to find some kind of a central strip of paper to work with, right? That's our thing. Now, another idea could be, Maybe you don't have something as sturdy as a cardboard. Maybe it's just some, some kind of a paper. Um, let's see, maybe I'll rip out a page from my magazine here just for the heck of it. Maybe it's like really, it's not very sturdy, right? Like, so another concept could be to take some kind of a paper and roll it, some kind of a loose roll. And you could actually seal that roll together by using some glue stick or some Elmer's glue or some tape or something like that. And just a little, just a little glue, kind of along along the edge here. Getting my glue right along that edge, and I'm just kind of rolling it. I could roll it around a, a cardboard tube or something, but but by rolling it a little bit, what you're doing is you're creating a little sturdiness to it. So I'm, I'm rolling this up, and I got my glue on there already. So now I can just kind of seal it up, and I've got this tube. This is the stem of my flower, right? So I could use I could use either one of these, right? I could fold this in half. There's lots of ways. 
there's no right or wrong way. And I think that a lot of times when I do art projects and we do art projects, we try to leave them open-ended so that the students have the opportunity to like have fun with it and mess around. All right, so you got your, uh, your base here. We're getting our base here. We got our stem. So now let's create our, uh, like the center of our flower, right? So, okay, I'm gonna find something here. I'm actually just gonna go right back to my, my box, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of cut out a shape. Now, just to show you the possibility of it, I'm just gonna rip out a shape, circle, square, kind of just a blob center of a flower. When ripping, I like to just kind of, you know, teach people to do little pinches and then you can steer, you know, just, just little pinches. Sometimes people try one thing, they come and they, they kind of go and they, and they get what they want. So I'm just going to do this with ripping. And, and I find that it gives me an organic shape anyway. So here I go. So now I've, I've just got a basic kind of a shape. Now I could, I could tune that a little bit. I don't have to. It's, it's, it's fine if it's got an organic shape. And I'm going to literally, I'm going to attach this right onto the top of my stem here, right? So... Is there a million ways this project can be done? I think you're already figuring out, absolutely. I'm just kind of making this up as I go in terms of how I'm choosing to do it. Just kind of looking at the materials, just letting them guide me, kind of like experimenting a little bit, just finding out. So, but what I did do is I smeared a lot of glue on here and glue stick can be great because it dries more quickly. Um, a lot of times the school glue is great if that's what you have. The trickiness is you have to wait a little bit while the, 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 the uh, glue stick dries a little more quickly. So I got a little glue on there. Here we go. Squish. And I stick it on to the top of my stem. So I'm already starting to kind of create my flower. And you can already see that, I mean, it almost looks like a torch. Maybe this is from my uh, Olympics championship, right? So now, um, go for it. You know, what are you going to do next? I'm going to just find some scraps here and I'm going to start making petals. Now, sometimes you can fold things like this is a piece. And I found out actually I actually had a heart in it. I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna cut it in half, kind of again, not a right or a wrong way, but now I've already got these kind of double petal things. I'm just gonna put a little glue stick in the middle here and I'm gonna start to go for it. Um, actually, I'm gonna rip these in half because I'm gonna kind of just deciding that that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just letting it go. Now I'm gluing them on. Here we go, voila. We're gonna attach them on. Now, sometimes you have to wait a second for the glue to dry enough for it to stick. And we, we hold it on and here we go. So I'm just gonna attach these petals on. And what a great experience to know that like there's really not you know, necessarily a right or a wrong. It's just kind of like organic, sticking things on, sticking shapes on. Um, and sometimes Joy and Lou use the term like, you know, concentric circles coming from the middle. Um, they've done lots of great projects. I think you saw some of those art shows, but just almost like a sun effect where I'm just putting some glue stick right onto the, right onto the object, or I could have just smeared it all over this and now had students stick on objects. And now here we go. We're starting to get our flower, right? And, and you can see how it's like, it's really abstract. So now just going for it, you know, and, and, you know, just, just go for it with me. Just, you know, give yourself that reward of a little moment of Zen here. What can you do? Maybe it's just a single color of a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be different colors. I'm just gonna do like a little yellow here. I'm putting this in the middle. And again, when you do examples for your students, they don't have to be super elaborate. They can be like kind of utilizing some of these same elements and really having fun with the, the freedom of it. And I don't know if you've seen the artwork of like you know, Matisse or, or some of these artists, but, but some of the most fantastic artwork can, can come like this, so. Let's see, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some leaves. I got some green here. I'm just gonna kind of rip out some, some strips of the green here. I'm gonna use these as my like leaves on my, on my flower. But yeah, like, so, you know, and there's so many great resources, you know, the residencies like with, with the Teaching Arts and Materials of the Arts, the other fantastic uh, teaching our organizations and do sustainability projects in lots of different ways. Um, and then all those great resources of, you know, different grants and, and possibilities to bring programs into your school can just be really inspiring. Um, but this is already getting me to talk about and think a lot about what are the parts of a flower? 
you know, what is a flower? What are, what are the elements of a flower? You know, what, what's going on here? What do these things down here do that these things do differently? Um, how does a flower live? Uh, and, and also at the same time, I mean, the, the engage is hopefully there, you know, in a sense that we're making something that's really, it's engaging and fun. So here we go. I'm working on it. So now I'm going to go back into my petals here and add some other colors. So that's, that's your challenge. So I'm just going to keep working here. And, it's, and I could have, again, I could have added that right onto this other cardboard piece here. Let's see if do a different color. Got this here. Oh, I'm gonna use my cereal or my cardboard box. And yeah, don't, don't, uh, I would say don't stress yourself out making too elaborate of, of examples. You know, it's, 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 Kind of thinking in terms of what what other the amount of time that your participants would have to work on their project maybe give yourself about that same amount of time um joyce done some great projects with called talking sticks where people wrap an object um, with various ribbons just in an organic tactile process now motor skills are 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 very important and 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 that's one of the things we're, we're trying to trying to think about here and if something falls off or if the garden bed doesn't grow flowers that's a success that's science that's that's you notice how these <laughs> everyone's talking about it like it's all good you know that's so cool that's that's the right perspective sometimes they you know that it's literally the story of plants is that they 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 grow and they they die and they grow again and it's really really interesting so now i'm adding on some other colors here and honestly, like, this is like the most fun I've had all day. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, this is, I'm saying. <laughs> Does anyone want to show any examples? Any, anyone got anything else? What do you got here, Pat? What are you working on? I, I see it in the. Uh, I have the background blurred. Let me unblur it. I see it kind of, yeah, it's a little blurry, but oh, yeah. So this is a, a cereal box. A pasta box and you know how at least this happens to me i when i order um delivery sometimes or i always ask no utensils etc but they always still give me chopsticks so this is a chopstick base here right that's fantastic yes that's a perfect example i mean it's just so cool too like i i love just seeing the the just the, the organic lines, too, of each petal of yours, and you can see the cut marks, and then you start to be like, wait, that is a pasta box. Like, and then it starts to be like this sustainability teaching tool, too, because it's like a cool, it's like a friendly way to get people to think about, you know, where things come from and where things go um, and, and take into account. And the chopstick is great. That's even sturdier than mine. So, you know, that's perfect. I love that. Um, Let's see here. Anyone else want to show any examples? Anyone else got anything going on here? Any brave souls? So, um, I, uh, I used um, an egg carton. Awesome. And now That's Joy is the guru here, folks. Just egg carton. That's easy. What do you got, Elana? Oh, yeah, Elana is good. <laughs> I have used my homecoming skills. And <laughs> some old construction paper and some birthday, old birthday ribbon, um, a piece of a box and a birthday bag um, to create my little yellow uh, ray of sunshine. <laughs> it's just fantastic. I mean, look how different each of those are. And that's like the cool thing. You know what I mean? It's like, and also the materials you find, like literally means each student gets an opportunity to have theirs just be different because of the supplies they're working with would anyone else like to share no worries i mean we're all you're on the spot here plus it's like you know who knew whether you're ready to make an art piece anyway but um you know just just to emphasize that um you know that it's a, just a, a free fun way to integrate project-based learning sustainability art engagement so many entry points 
And, um, you know, that's it, you know, in terms of my, you know, I'm, I think everybody understands that, you know, so it's just kind of a chance to, to lead that experience. But, but most importantly, I'm really excited, Pat, that you, you brought this group together. Um, I think there's so much more just awesome work that can be done and I'm excited. Well, thank you, John. And uh, if we can get a thank you for everybody on here, Alana, Natalie, really appreciate you sharing today. And yeah, like John said, excited to be just starting this work, starting this community. So really looking forward to where this can go.